right, today is Motivational Monday, and we could all use a little push to keep going. I spoke with James Russo Sr. to learn about six keys to success on our own terms. When you think about success on your own terms, how do we ultimately decide that we can do that in the first place? I think it starts with tapping into your gifts and talents, right? So I'm a huge believer in you have to know who you are. And some of that is almost like um, considering your, your fingerprints and you look at your hand, look at your fingerprints, you are unique in your fingerprints. It's the reason that agencies can use your fingerprints to hunt you down, unfortunately, right? But on a positive side, um, you have the same thing in terms of your, your creation overall, right? So finding uh, and spending the time to do that internal journey in terms of what you are uniquely created to do and doing that is where I think, I think that's the first building block of confidence. The six keys to success on our own terms. Can you break them down for us? Absolutely. So the first one is embrace your passion. And that's what I talked about before. And you could you can replace passion with purpose or put passion slash purpose. But what are you created to do uniquely, right? What are your unique fingerprints and what are you going to do? And embrace it. Oftentimes, we see it as, um, that's what I'm looking for. It's not possible. Let me just say it that way. And so if you were 13, when you're 13, 14 years old and you ask, or you ask a 13, 14 year old, uh, what do they want to do? They're crystal clear. I want to be an architect. I want to be an actor. I want to be an electrician. And that's because they haven't been disrupted with the realities of life yet. Then somewhere along the way, we get great advice from people who love us. And that says, well, you gotta, you gotta earn a living. And so we kick passion and purpose to the side. They do not have to be mutually exclusive. You can figure out ways to get into it. So that's the first thing. The second one is perform to progress versus perfection. And so we live in a world now more than ever before where we see signs of perfection all around us. Like most people's social media posts are not about the challenges in the valleys. They're about the winning on top. I'm always winning. No one's always winning. Okay, so you want to perform to progress. You want to make progress, just like I talked about those goals and milestones. So that's number two. Number three is promote with purpose. And I say that because people usually are on opposite sides of the spectrum. Either they feel like if I'm promoting, I look slick. I look like I'm, you know, self-aggrandizing. I look like, a, and the other side of the spectrum is I don't say anything. My performance should speak for itself. There is a middle ground. You do need to tell a number of people, what you're trying to do, what you have done, where you're trying to go, and garner their support. So that's number three. Number four is parlay your platform. And the reason that's important is because we often have a tendency to, to, to think we don't have enough yet. And the, the thing I encourage people to always remember is there's someone looking at you wishing they were sitting in your chair. Always. I don't care where you are. You say, well, I haven't reached that VP role yet. I'm a director. You know how many people want to be a director? I haven't reached the director your role yet. I'm a manager. Do you know how many people want to be a manager? <laughs> and so I, I could keep going, okay? Uh, number five is put it into action. So after you've done the planning, you so you've gotten your mind together, you got the vision together, you're beginning to uh, perform, you're starting to promote and talk to people, you're parlaying your platform, you have to now take some action against the plan. You need to write out a plan of what you're going to do. And whether you're a full year planning person, whether you're that repetitive 12 week planning type of person, you need to come out of what I say sometimes, the laboratory of your mind and thinking about it and go put it into action. And then the last step, is, is, it says practice philanthropy, but all it means is give back to someone else all the things you just learned, right? There, there are two reasons to do that. One, um, retention increases when you learn and teach, right? Oh, excuse me, learn, do, teach. There's something about when you go to teach someone else that added level of accountability makes you want to do better. The second thing is, hey, contribute to making the world a better place. I know it sounds like motherhood and apple pie, but we all just need to help somebody. <laughs> Seriously, if we're all helping someone, it gets better all around us.